Mr. Asrani, welcome uh, to India Rights Network. Uh, to, be, uh, to, to begin with, how do you look at the importance? This visit is seen as you know, one of the defining uh, transformational visit by a foreign leader. Uh, how do you look at the importance of Mr. Abhi's trip to India? Let us not forget that it is following on the emperor's visit. Right. That also was a landmark. Mm -hmm. So I consider this year, 13-14, uh, uh, as a remarkable year mm -hmm. in not further any additional growth in India-Japan relations. It continues to grow. Right. For the last mm -hmm. 13 years, since the year 2000, it has been growing and growing. Right. What these two visits do is to mark mm -hmm. uh, the, the level mm -hmm. to which the relations have gone. Right. Uh, it is the highest level in the history of India-Japan relations. And it marks, I think, the fact, in my opinion, that for us, Japan is the best friend we have mm -hmm. amongst the major powers. Right. And in terms of economic relations, also, Japan is one of the two most important countries for us, right. the other being USA. Right. Uh, and uh, Mr. Abe is also being treated as chief guest right. at our Republic Day Parade, which is also the first yeah. time. So these are symbolic mm -hmm. of the stage to which our relations have gone. Right. So mm -hmm. looking uh, specifically at the agenda mm -hmm. of the forthcoming mm -hmm. annual summit, between the leaders of India and Japan. Mm -hmm. What do you think are going to be two or three most important issues on the table mm -hmm. when uh, our Prime Minister Manmohan Singh sits down for talks with Mr. Abe? Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what do you think would be uh, some of the key outcomes? Yeah, we have to bear in mind that these visits have now become annual affairs. Right. Either our Prime Minister goes there or their Prime Minister comes there. Our Prime Minister went there about eight months ago. So it is soon following thereafter. So I do not see any completely new project, but there are things under discussion which could see some further progress as a result of this meeting. And their, their defense minister was here recently. Uh, so there also there was a continuation of this. And this could be further continued during the PM's visit. For example, uh, there is the progress in the DMIC, mm -hmm. the uh, Delhi-Mumbai Industrial uh, 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 Corridor, and a new corridor now, uh, that is Chennai-Bangalore uh, Industrial Corridor. So I'm sure there will be yeah, some discussions right. on the progress in those. Plus, there is this uh, Japanese bid for a U-2 aircraft, mm -hmm. which is a surveillance aircraft. That's right. Uh, I mention this because it would be the first time that Japan uh, would be exporting something in the defense. They have a very strict policy uh, of not exporting or sharing any technology in the defense field. So this would be a break if and when it comes through. Right. There may be some progress on that. Then there is an ongoing negotiation on the uh, nuclear energy issue. Uh, again. I have not seen any news of a breakthrough coming. Mm -hmm. uh, the two prime ministers can only uh, encourage mm -hmm. the negotiators mm -hmm. to bring an early right. uh, closure to the negotiations. Right. Uh, some say this is India's Japan moment and mm -hmm. uh, Japan's India moment. Mm -hmm. That finally Asia's uh, two leading democracies are uh, discovering, uh, rediscovering. Uh, the, the potential of the friendship and relations. Uh, mm. How far is this assessment uh, correct? Yes, I would emphasize the word rediscovering That's right. because in the 1950s, our relations were excellent. Absolutely. I consider that also as a golden period. And significantly, that period also was marked by the visit of the current emperor of Japan, mm -hmm. except that at that time, he was the crown prince. True. So there are similarities. But then came an intervening period of some three decades right. when we continued to be cordial, but the Cold War came in between. And that was not all. We must always remember in India-Japan relations, economics, uh, economic interest uh, in each other is very important. 
and we were inward looking during that period. True. So therefore, the Japanese were losing interest. So now this is a complete revival. This is a new era. Uh, ever since the century turned, but possibly a golden uh, era. Golden era, I think, and I hope it is not the peak right. because I would like to see further growth. Right. True. Mm. And there are areas of right. further growth. Mm. So in what way uh, uh, India-Japan relations? are unique and special because, you know, these are the two countries, uh, Asian powers, some say, uh, who don't have uh, any historical baggage or any yes. history of dispute and bitterness. That's right. There is much that unites them. Yes. Uh, but still, the relationship, of course, is growing, but it remains under leveraged. Yes, as I said, it was because of the two factors that in the last century, our relations did not develop as much as they could have. Now, that is behind us. Right. The Cold War was long over, and the economic interests are now two ways. And this is a big change that right up to the end of the last century, the relationship was asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. We were interested in getting Japanese aid, right. Japanese technology, whereas they could not find enough market, so their interest was very limited. Today, it is symmetrical. In two areas, mm -hmm. not just economic. Economics continues to be very important, but now there is an added area, and that is strategic right. uh, cooperation. Right. And there, the fact that India has a strong navy right. plays a very important role, yes. because for the Japanese, uh, what is uppermost in their minds is the safety of their navigation routes, right. because all their supplies of oil and other raw materials go from mm -hmm. Indian Ocean Pacific area. And our Navy's presence mm -hmm. gives them a little satisfaction. Right. And in fact, we have been cooperating, right. including the Coast Guard cooperation. Mm -hmm. And our naval exercises continue. And now I believe during the Defense Minister's visit, we have agreed to a trilateral uh, naval exercise of USA, Japan, and India, right. maybe in the Pacific. Right. We have also agreed, I believe, uh, uh, during uh, the Defense Minister's visit, to joint air exercises now. So these are new areas uh, beyond economics. Uh, but coming back to trade and investment, for mm -hmm. many years, uh, top Japanese companies and corporates were relatively indifferent mm -hmm. uh, to India because mm -hmm. of many reasons, mm -hmm. poor infrastructure, uh, debt, tapism, and a whole, whole host of other issues. Now, uh, do you think the image of India as a business destination had changed for Japanese companies? And can we expect more investments in the days to come? We can certainly expect more investment. In fact, they are coming and they will continue. Their complaints regarding Indian uh, infrastructure, uh, labor laws, and interpretation of our tax laws, bureaucracy, those complaints still remain. But the market is so huge mm -hmm. that the attraction overcomes uh, these uh, shortcomings. Yeah. And uh, you are right that earlier the big companies uh, did not pay much attention. In fact, Sony set up a factory in uh, India and then went back, took it out because it found it not worthwhile. Now, what th there is a change in the policies of the top manufacturers of Japan instead of limiting themselves only to uh, high quality, highest quality, high price items, they are prepared to look at the emerging markets, right, right. Uh, what they need. Right, and uh, they are adjusting themselves to our needs rather than telling us what they can sell, buy it or leave it. So I am, I am aware of many companies, including right. uh, the uh, electronic companies, and uh, various other uh, high-tech companies setting up not only offices in India for sale, but even manufacturing facilities in India because otherwise they would be uneconomic. Right. So the manufacturer has to be taken in India. This is coming. Another factor I have noticed is that uh, you might have heard that there are nearly 1,000 Japanese companies now in India, mm -hmm. which means it is not only the big companies, even the medium and small Japanese companies have started coming. Right. That's mm -hmm. a good news. And yes, I think we are yes. also pushing for mm -hmm. a special network, SME network. That's right. That's right. India and Japan. And that's so right. That's good news. It that's spreads right. the cake, exactly. as it were. Uh, 
uh, also, uh, you know, just coming back to the strategic part of the relationship, mm. which is now acquiring greater salience, uh, there is a, a perception mm. among some sections of the strategic community mm. that uh, India-Japan relationship, especially in the last couple of years, this, uh, this renewed momentum is in some way driven by a strategic um, impulse uh, directed towards containing China. Uh, do you think that assessment or that perception is justified? Uh, yes, the China factor is there. But I would not term it containing China. Right. It is more like a defensive posture uh -huh. against any one country like China right. acquiring hegemony. Right. Whether it is a military hegemony, right. Uh, having its orders imposed, right. this is my area of interest right. and you dare not come here, right. that kind of assertion, right. or economic hegemony. Mm -hmm. It is more in that sense a defensive uh, a kind of a partnership mm -hmm. against anyone acquiring right. any hegemony. Right. So Absolutely. that is really, the, and one other thing I wanted to mention that when I say India-Japan economic partnership, right. I don't take trade alone. Right, In fact, trade is not very large. Absolutely. I take the entire relationship, right. ODA, FDI, trade, technology, very important technology, right. and finally, uh, that uh, the uh, uh, Japanese companies right. in Southeast Asia also prosper from our relations with Southeast Asia. Right. When we have FTA agreements with Southeast right. Asia, Japanese companies get more into because their factories there sure. prosper. You see, uh, very often people make the mistake, as I said earlier, of judging economic relations by the trade. Mm -hmm. That is only trade is only one factor. Right, absolutely. Uh, one other factor that I did not mention was the billions and billions of dollars that have come from Japan into our stock market and bonds market. Absolutely. Maybe through New York companies, mm -hmm. but it is Japanese money right, that is right. coming. Now, why is this happening? Because Japan is a capital exporter par excellence. Mm -hmm. Very uh, few people know mm -hmm. that when we talk of Japanese government's indebtedness, mm -hmm. it is indebtedness to their own people, right. not like the Americans and Europeans who are indebted to the whole world. Right. Their government is indebted to Japan, but Japan as a country right has given $3 trillion to the rest of the world right, on credit right. or investments. Right. So for us, Japan is the most investor from that point of view right. because Japanese are frugal, they save a lot, and although their population is only 120 million, the savings are tremendous. Mm -hmm. And they are accumulating those right. savings, Absolutely. which are a great... Plus, they have the top most uh, uh, technology, right. high tech right. items. This is the attraction, and this will continue, no matter what GDP growth of Japan. Uh, see. So just to uh, sum mm. up, uh, mm. uh, Mr. Abe's visit is mm. clearly a big moment in the history of relations mm. between the two countries. But as you said in the beginning, mm. this is uh, uh, not a peak. There are new frontiers waiting of to course. be. Yes, quite opened. right. So looking ahead, what mm. are the two or three areas where you see? Uh, India-Japan relations acquiring greater traction and, mm. and more weight. Yeah, uh, I would like, I see difficulties. Right. Difficulties because of Japan's pacifism, right. of the people's pacifism and the extent to which Mr. Abe can overcome that right. towards reality. Right. And the reality I have in mind is that we are one of the biggest importers of defense equipment. Right. And Japan has some very high-tech items mm -hmm in electronics, for example, right. in composite materials, for example, right. where we could be interested right. and they would benefit from exports to India. But in addition, what I am really interested in is joint development in R&D. Right. Because we are good in R&D mm -hmm. and because of our skilled manpower availability, mm -hmm. it would be useful for Japan right. to make use of India R&D base. Right. And this leads to the other side, the point in Overall, not only in the defense item, but every part of the economy, and that is our uh, uh, the skilled manpower, right. which J Japan, as you know, faces a terrible demographic deficit, mm -hmm. 
and this is our strong point mm -hmm. and so far they have been having very limited immigration unlike Europeans and Americans right. and though that those are limited to the Chinese and Koreans right. they would welcome in future I think mm -hmm. Indian immigrants because Indians are very well behaved right. and I think it would be a good partnership so your trust with Japan uh, started way back in the 60s that's right when you posted as an, mm. as an officer in the Indian Embassy Mm. And since then, both India and Japan have changed uh, in uh, mm. many ways. Mm. Uh, also, what is not being realized is that mm. people think that this relationship is of recent vintage. Mm. There is mm. also a very rich history of cultural civilizational interaction. Quite right. You briefly talk about cultural and civilizational links mm. between India and Japan. Mm. Well, you see, uh, the uh, f first interest in India came from Tagore. Tagore's visit to Japan, and even before that, Vivekananda. Right. Uh, of course, one can take into account even an older relationship, and that is Buddhism, right, right. Uh, which took place seven centuries ago. Right. India's name, J Japan knew only two foreign countries right. in the old days. Right. One was China, right. the other was India. What was India's name? Right. Tenjiku, mm -hmm. the heaven to the west. Right, absolutely. We were heaven because we were the birthplace of Buddha mm -hmm. and we were to the West. Right. So they had great respect mm -hmm. for Indian thought, philosophy, Buddhism, etc. Right. and all that. And you will find more Hindu gods mm -hmm. uh, in statues in Kyoto and Nara than you find in India. Mm -hmm. Because they are the old gods that traveled along with Buddhism wow. somehow. So this India has been known to Japan. It's not a new relationship. Absolutely. And we, of course, had been admirers of Japan right. because it made us feel that even an Asian country mm -hmm. could uh, rise to the same level as any Western right. uh, democracy. So that has been there. On, that was very evident in the 1950s because not only was Tagore and Subhash Chandra Bose uh, known names, but also don't forget the contribution of Justice Radha Vinod Pal. Radha Vinod Pal who was one judge out of 21 mm -hmm. who said not guilty right. of war crimes Absolutely. because why should I see only one side right. in a war there are right. two sides and for all I know there were atrocities on the other side right. too right. so not guilty and this is greatly admired that here is an Indian mm -hmm. who had the courage to stand up to 20 other white judges mm -hmm. and say not guilty right. so he has gone down in the textbooks of Japan right. Right. Uh, Plus, Nehru uh, said no war reparations required. Right. Sent an elephant mm -hmm. to Japan for the children of the Ueno Zoo. Mm -hmm. So many. The was called yes, uh, and India, right? yeah, yes, India. and and he uh, helped Japan uh, enter the United Nations. Right. Got them invited to the Bandung Conference. So Nehru was very kind. As a result, many people have forgotten that between fifty-eight and sixty-one. There were two visits by Japanese Prime Ministers. Nehru visited Japan and the Crown Prince of Japan visited right, India. Yeah. So that was the closeness of the relationship. Right. Unfortunately, it became weak because of the two factors I told you right, earlier. Right. So coming down to more recent times and on the, mm. on the, on the subject of cultural transmission yes, yes. and contact. Yes. Uh, you know, apart from Buddhism now, uh, like Indian films, Bollywood, Yes. It's quite popular. It's catching on in Japan. Yeah, I, I also, sometimes... Yeah, 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 quite uh, right. It's called Odori Maharaja. Yeah, quite you right. talk about something about the popular culture, uh, at, the, uh, at the level of popular culture, how do India and Japan connect to each other? Yeah, they, actually the Prime Minister Abe must be given credit for thinking about this people-to-people -people contact. Yeah, right, and the last time he came as Prime Minister, he brought a dozen presidents of top Japanese universities right, right. to meet their counterparts in India. He wanted to promote more students right. and tourism, etc. Right. And uh, as, a, as a result of that, uh, all the universities of Japan are represented by two centers, mm -hmm. one in Delhi and one in Bangalore, right. who encourage uh, studies in Japan and give scholarships, right. etc. So this is one way. The other is tourism. Right. And in tourism, right. I have been emphasizing to the Japanese and I think they are taking up that, uh, that Bollywood is a very useful way of promoting even tourism. That's right. Uh, for example, uh, that love in, uh, Tokyo, love in Tokyo, 
made Japan known to everyone and everyone wanted to visit right. this lovely country. Right. Right. So you are quite right. right. This Bollywood does play a very big role uh, in our cultural relations. Mishra Abe himself has been encouraging people-to-people uh, -people contact through uh, students going to Japan and uh, tourism. Right. And uh, Bollywood, in a way, is connected to tourism mm -hmm. because if we see uh, in, a, say, Indian film, J the Japanese tourist place as a background mm -hmm. that leads to more Indians going to Japan. And Rajni Khan became, uh, to everyone's surprise, mm -hmm. very popular. One has tried to analyze right. why. I think it, because it was so different, mm -hmm. uh, much more different than say, right. Bollywood uh -huh. was the uh, Chennai Rajni right. Khan. So I think that was the, the right. different idea. And uh, Japanese are one of the most curious races in the world. Right. Right. Uh, and they take an interest in everything. And I think they find India quite fascinating. Right.